Okay, let's continue LPIC. What is this? This is so funky. Why it's here? Ha, fine. <laughs> it's giving me links to be navigated by uh, keyboard. So if I push F, it will go to this link. I believe here is no link, so it shows this funky thing. Anyway. We spoke about how computers keep times using their hardware clock, how they keep the UTC time when booting up where from that hardware clock, and how they cal calculate the current time in this local time using time zones and the local time file from the user share zone info data. But our hardware clock is just a simple digital clock on our motherboard. If we need the exact time, as we need it these days for different things, GPSs, uh, cryptography, information, and everything needs the exact time. How we can keep that? That is done via the NTP protocol, Network Time Protocol. So NTP protocol is not the correct name because it's NTP, Network Time Protocol. Protocol. Anyway. But I always use it NTP protocol. So, poolNTP.org is the address of one of the NTP servers in the world. There are different computers dedicated to keeping the exact time. They are connected or are part of the very, very highly accurate digital clocks, atomic clocks. And you can query them what time is it very easy and interesting this is my favorite protocol in the world on the internet so you can have different computers they will have their own addresses one of the very very famous and widely used ones are poolntp.org servers pool means that there are there is a pool with lots of servers in it and when you connect here it will go to one of these servers in this pool of servers so you should know about this address although many organizations do have their own ntp servers which are connected to other ntp servers to have the exact time the whole protocol is ntp there is an implementation of this protocol which is ntp or ntpd program daemon there are newer ones one of them is crony. You should know about both of them, not a big difference anyway. Crony is a newer implementation. It's more suitable for everyday use. Its emphasis is keeping time correct on the computers, which can be connected and disconnected to the servers all the time. NTP is more security oriented and also implements all the possible features are NTP. For example, NTP do have this possibility that when computer boots up and it doesn't know anything about any NTP servers, NTP can just shout and say, what's the time? Someone answers me. It can broadcast the request. So some computer may answer, okay, I'm an NTP server. This is the time. Don't shout. From now on, just ask me. Crony doesn't have this feature because it doesn't need it. Your laptop has a configuration file which says what is my uh, NTP servers. Even if it doesn't have this, you can just configure it. So Crony is a newer, more everyday use oriented program. NTPD is the orig is the official, maybe original base implementation of the protocol by the creator, at least in the beginning. There are different uh commands also present one is ntp date if i issue ntp date it says okay you should ntp date some servers so i say okay ntp date i know about pool ntp.org says okay you need root access to change the time says, okay sudo ntp date pool ntp.org now it's asking about the time. What if, why it takes time? Because if you have a server here and you are here, this is the NTP server, and you are here using NTP date, for example, to ask about the time, you say, what's the time, please? 
it answers back this is the time you cannot just set whatever answer as your time because this also takes some time to happen cool that's why NTP is a very cool project just imagine you are a satellite somewhere going far far from the world from the earth not from the world you ask the time NTP server answers back and you are going further and further so you will get the answer when you are here you have to know the time it's complicated you should ask it many times see how long it takes for the answer to return back maybe this and this are equal maybe not from all these questions and answers you have to calculate okay time should be this and set it if you are the two servers very close to each other you can assume that this is correct if you are far and it takes for example one millisecond for this you can assume okay this is still good if it takes one second you have to ask many times and see how long it took for the it, the round to go and return calculate the return time maybe do this 10 times you see and it is super cool when it works it says okay this is your offset i've set the time on this and this was your mistaken seconds ah on the previous lesson on the previous section of the same lesson we changed the time to somewhere in 2022 so we were wrong this much if i run this again this will be shorter smaller okay it says this time i queried this server you gave me this server answered back i've checked it and new time is this one and this was my offset your computer was one second behind ahead sorry let's do it again each time it will become better if you have a good connection so it's okay now i set the new time i'll set it half a second ahead your computer was behind and you can run it many times and you have to run it every single time your computer boots up because now the time is set on this i have to set my hardware clock on this as you saw in the previous lesson then the computer boots up it's set on this one and it's not bad if we run it every once in a while or every once a day or with a crown every hour to set the time not very nice so we have a service for this here i have this it's good to set your time on what we got but we have a service for this ntpd it's a linux service you can install it if you don't have it there is a configuration file which i will show you in a minute and then you can start the service and the computer will have the correct time all the time because service is running it will contact the service you've configured in its configuration file and will keep the time correct every single moment this is a better way and the fun fact is you cannot install ntp date and ntp service at the same time at least you cannot use it at the same time because they both use the service on ntp socket this is a sample etc ntp configuration file or ntpd depends on how you use it or how it's configured there are different things there but the main part is the pool configuration here you have the configuration for your pools it says okay i have defined four different pools zero debian pool ntp org use i burst it's a different methods of asking the time many times ask it and check the differences calculate what the exact time should be based on the statistics so you configured you've configured four different pools here there are lots of other configurations for example you can tell it don't answer to anyone because normally based on the protocol when you query the ntp server and you have the time and you are running the ntpd service you can be a server for others so 
you may answer to others about the correct time. Anyway, this is one of the methods you can work. Another one is NTP queue. When you have the NTP stack, one command is NTP queue, which is for query. You can say NTP queue query dash P, print the status. It will show you how many, rem how, which remote servers you are connecting, what is your offset on any of them, what is your delay, what is your other configurations and everything. There is one star here which says, okay, you are using this server. There are some pluses which says this server is also good. And there are some minuses which says, okay, this is a bad server. I won't use this one. No, this is for offset, sorry. This is bad. NTP, this is bad. This is super slow, for example, in this example. This is good. And I'm using this one. This is NTP queue. But nowadays, we are not using these much. In many distributions, people are switching to Crony. As I've told you, Crony is another implementation of the NTP protocol. And it's more suitable for everyday use on our desktop or laptop computers. Again, there is a configuration that is etc crony crony conf. Kind of the same because same protocol. The main part is defining different pools. I have a pool. It uses ntpubuntu.com. Zero Ubuntu pool ntp.org, our beloved ones, has its dedicated distribution subdomains and again using iBurst. Also, there are some sections for other configurations, but most of them are not needed if you are going for LPIC1 or if you are going for a normal system administration and not administrating the whole uh, time protocols. At the moment, Red Hat 8, SUSE 15 are using Crony and I think Ubuntu. There is service there, so you can say systemctl status Crony. It says, okay, Crony is running. It selected source this one at the moment at once it was not able to synchronize that was because I changed the time and the distance was a lot. So Crony normally won't just update the service. These are all uh, important settings. Let me show you the Crony C. This is a CLI or command line interface to connect to Crony services. You can say Crony C and give it one command. For example, you can say tracking. It will show you the status of its tra tracking. It says system time is this seconds fast of NTP time. Okay, not a big deal. Last offset was this. And lots of other information, including the reference time with the UTC and the leap status. This was, was, this was what I was talking about. If the NTP shows that we are in 2023, and your computer time is set on 2022 or two days uh, behind the NTP time, it's risky for any NTP service to just change the time. Why? Because for example, you are doing something important. You are, I don't know, you are a server calculating people's phone bills. Someone is connected and speaking. Your system time is wrong, 2022. Crony checks and says, okay, the correct time is 2023 and just change the time to 2023. The same person is still speaking with her beloved partner. Actual time was one minute, but your system time jumped one year ahead. The billing system will say, okay, this person was talking for one year. Not interesting. So both NTP and Crony and other systems are kind of cautious when they want to jump the time. 
The worst, if it jumps back, your system may crash, strange things may happen if time goes backwards. That's why these systems try to not to break things. For example, about NTP I know, when the system booting up is booting up, the first time it will change the time. But if there is a huge time gap, it won't change the time anymore. It won't jump. On Crony and again on NTP, there are different fun things happening too. For example, we have this leap second. Leap year is fine. It's just a change in the calendar. But there is also a concept called leap second. Sometimes we need to add one second to the time to adjust our calculations based on the actual change in the world, what is happening with the earth going around the sun. Some years we need to add one second. Crony doesn't jump one second to fix this. It just adds this to the last minute of the day. For example, instead of counting 60 seconds, it still counts 60 seconds, but count the 60 seconds in 61 seconds. So each millisecond is a little bit longer. Practically nothing, no jump happens. It just goes a little bit slower when counting time. Crony can do the same even with larger times. If you want to jump one hour, Crony won't jump one hour. It just slows down the time so during the next 24 hours it can fix this. It's a very fun thing to do. More fun is even Crony has an algorithm to go back one second, slowly and slowly, so time won't go back. Or even there are settings for you have to go, you have to wait one hour. It's a long time. Or one day. It's a long time. The, some systems can just wait. If anybody asked about the time, I will go a little bit ahead. So I'm going super slow only if people ask. Otherwise, the time stands still. So if someone asks, I say, okay, some, some time has passed because time always should go forward but I will make it super slow to answer to this change. All of these are fun things. You have this crony tracking. It says at the moment leap status is normal. I'm not going to slower or faster. And you can also run crony C. It's a command line interface. You can say, okay, show me activity. It says my activity is okay. I'm doing fine. You can say sources. It will show you the sources it's using. And another good thing is same logic here. It says, okay, I'm using this, which is cool. These are bad. And also the crony command line interface, crony C, can connect to remote servers using TCP IP. So you can have a central server which checks the status or activity, check the status with the activity command of different services. Exit will exit. I can say crony activity. It says, okay, this computer is fine. So from far away, you can check different crony activities. From far, you can only do the monitoring commands. You cannot do the changes. Anyway, I've told you much, much more than what was needed for LPIC1. Hope you enjoyed it. And NTP is my favorite protocol. Have a review and see how it can adjust time in different situations. It's fun. We will go for the next section soon.